Good evening, Internet Shroom here, and we're headed back to Modern again this week to uh, go through another league, and it's high noon. We're going to have to lock our opponents out with the combo prison deck. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. <laughs> Wizards, why? Why are you making me do this? All right, so this is a Jeskai prison deck that I played a couple of different iterations of, but it got an amazing new piece in Outlaws of Thunder Junction, High Noon. So this is a two-mana enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Now, you may, rem may remember there was an enchantment called uh, Rule of Law. It d did that same exact thing, but it cost three meta. So this is just a cheaper version. Okay. Um, but this High Noon has additional text as well. For four and a red, you can sack it to deal five damage to any target. So it's just an instant speed lava axe that can hit anything uh, whenever you want by sacking the uh, enchantment and paying five, which is great because one of the problems that the deck had was with closing out games. But this just gives us free lava axes and combined with our you know threats that we're going to use and uh, our bolts we should be able to close out games uh, more quickly than we otherwise could so the lock is a piece like high noon we've got that we've also got archons of amirias to produce the rule of law high noon effect when you combine that with teferi time raveler or grand abolisher grand abolisher uh, just prevents your opponent from casting spells or activating abilities during your turn teferi you know that um, restricts your opponent to uh, sorcery speed when you have these two pieces together, it means that our opponents can only cast one spell each turn cycle um, at sorcery speed on their main phase, uh, which we then proceed to remand. We are packing four remands and four reprieves, uh, which is a piece that we can use to essentially nullify all of our opponent's plays, drawing cards as we do so. That is the basic idea. And this lock, it's only two cards, and we can get it on the battlefield by like turn three so it's actually surprisingly easy to get the lock assembled um so the pieces are the four high noons the three archons of amiria the four to fairy time rattlers the three grand abolishers um and then the rest of the deck is just like control stuff removal and finishers so we've got the eight remands eight four remand four reprieve um we've got spell quellers which are also really really good in this uh lockdown scenario because if our opponent happens to kill the spell queller normally they would get to cast the the spell that was exiled with the spell queller but they won't get to do that because they will have spent their one spell under the high nude effect removing the spell queller so whatever uh, this had exiled just fizzles and um of course spell queller is how we close out the game in part um, another piece that we have is Fevered Visions. This is a three mana enchantment that uh, just gives us some cards. At the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card. If that player is your opponent and has four more cards in their hand, Fevered Visions deals two damage to that player. So it's also a win condition. It lets us draw more cards so we can get to our remands um, to, to remand our opponent's plays on the following turn. And um, it also does damage, two damage to our opponent because since they can only play one spell per turn cycle and we're going to keep remanding it, uh, they're going to have a handful of cards and they're just going to take pings for two every turn from Fevered Visions. Uh, we've got a uh, place of Lightning Bolts to interact with our opponent in the early game, also to close out games with uh, direct damage. We've got uh, a couple of Archmage's Charms, kind of just represent like... Um, remands uh nine and ten well the spell colors kind of represent like nine through twelve so i guess this is like 13 and 14 um this is kind of a flex slot honestly like a just it's a first tell spell that lets us draw some cards like we do want to be able to draw some cards at some point during the games and the little extra card advantage to get us to our reprieves and our win cons can be good. We've got a subtlety, which is just um it can be like a force of negation for creatures and planeswalkers. It's a creature that we can spend at instant speed uh, to nullify our opponent's play. It fits in well with the theme of the deck, can be cast for free, and it's just an extremely powerful piece. And as one final piece of interaction, we have one of Prismatic Ending, just because we do want to be able to catch those early game plays like turn one Raghavans, etc. from our opponent. So that's the basic idea. We're going to lock our opponent to only one play each turn cycle. We're going to beat them down with our Archons, our janky little beats, our Spell Quellers. Uh, we're going to close them out with uh, Fevered Vision Burns, High Noon Burn, and Lightning Bolts. There's a total of 24 lands in the mana base, nothing too fancy. It is like a, um, a fetch and check land mana base that I'm kind of fond of for three color decks. It's got a one of Iganjo, one of Otawara. Um, that covers the main board. The sideboard contains uh, three rest in peace from uh, graveyard decks, a couple of Path to Exiles. These are against um, big creature decks like the Domain decks, where the um, like the Kavus can be too big for Lightning Bolt to kill. Um, 
the sign of, of Draco can be too much for a prismatic ending. So Path to Exile is a good catch-all for that. Also good against, like, Murktide Regent. Um, we've got a subtlety that will board in against matchups like that that we know have a lot of creatures. Um, we've got an Abrade, a couple of Wear Tears for artifacts and enchantments. Wear Tear is also very good against um, Urza Saga because for one mana you can just destroy target enchantment and um, get rid of those Urza Sagas. A couple of Dovin's Vetoes can come in against Control as well as Chief Force of Negation. One spell that we're really scared of is Teferi Time Raveler because we don't want to be we don't want to suffer from the lock that we're presenting to the board. Yeah, I mean we're going to be under High Noon. Uh, effect that's why we can't like have snapcaster mages to recast romance or anything like that but we don't we want to be able to play stuff on our opponent's turn so we don't want to ferry time Raveler to resolve ergo the force of negations and a couple of pithy needles um this is good against a lot of matchups you can name the one ring we kind of like the one ring we kind of don't mind if our opponents resolve it that much like them getting protection for one turn from our beats is a little annoying, but the actual card draw doesn't really matter that much because we're just going to remand whatever they play anyway. So uh, it's not like them drawing extra cards does a lot for them. And it's just like extra damage that they're going to take. So we don't need necessarily like um, cast into the fire. We don't need things to exile the one ring. This Pithy Needle is more aimed at like Yogmoth. You also can name um, Beseju who endures with Pithy Needle. Uh, against green decks so that they can't uh, besage you channel to destroy your high noons and i think that covers it that is the plan partners let's lock our opponents out so i did earn a bunch of play points from last week's league where i forewarned so i'm going to play through another league with this deck because it is pretty rude and this is again the kind of deck that in the practice keys people will just scoop against so we'll run another league it's not my preference but let's burn burn up those uh, play points see if we can't get another good result um, I hope you enjoy this content. If you like off-meta, off-kilter MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. All right, we're against Left Coast SF, a fellow Baleful Beholder. We'll be on the draw. And this hand has our combo pieces, so we don't have double white for Abolisher. Hopefully we can draw it by turn three. This is a situation where our mana is a little sketchy. Because we do have Archmage's Charm and Abolisher. So I should say there's another card from Thunder Junction that could absolutely be a good inclusion. Uh, or could have been. I'll keep this. And it's the Avon Interrupter. It's another 3 mana flash 2-2 uh, flyer. Planes into... Sigarda's Aid. Okay, so hammer time. Lanes. That's scary. It's another three mana uh, flash flyer that exiles a spell when it ETBs. And then later can plot, you know, let your opponents plot the spell. So it's not quite as good as, uh, it's not as good as Spell Queller because they do get to cast the spell right away. There's a... Um, as for Sentinel, okay. And do they just have the hammer right now? Well, we might get hammered. And we're going to have to give up, give up a couple of cards to the Esper Sentinel. But we got to do what we got to do. Oh, well, they cast their one spell per turn. There's a bolt. I 
think I'll play Teferi. Yeah, you get a card. Uh, let's bounce their cigar to Zade. Yeah, let's bounce cigar to Zade. I oh, know all their stuff has hex proof. Okay, so we'll just plus. So your one spell per turn cycle will be hammer. That'd be terrible. No hammer. No hammer. No hammer. Please, Hammer, don't hurt us. Uh, the thing about Avon Interrupter is it's another three mana flash. Another three drop, which we have probably too many of already in our library. But it's certainly something I considered. Um, in the end, I decided to go with Archmage's Charm instead. Just because I thought the deck could use a little more card draw. Well, their hesitation makes me think they don't have the hammer. Oh, this is a new land. For more vaults, discard a card, look at the top X cards. Okay, they ping to fairy for one. Now I just want to draw Remands. Look at the top X cards where X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those into your hand and the rest on the bottom. Okay. That's a cool land. All right, let us bounce the Esper Sentinel. Um, I didn't draw a remand, so I'm gonna shock in the steam vent so I can counter something. If needed. Stoneforge Mystic. Goes and gets a hammer. There's Urza's Saga. So I think we gotta kill the Mystic so that it can't flash in the hammer. Remand. That is what we want. So I'm gonna play my Abolisher. This also means they can't activate their Urza Saga during my turn. So if they want to make their Constructs, they have to do it on their turn. Here comes the Nexus. Here comes the Hammer. We'll remand it.
Gonna tickle Teferi a little bit. All right, they make a construct. So we didn't draw another remand, which sucks. Let's plus. Let's play a prismatic vista and pass, I think. Make a construct. Um, let's see. I'm trying to artifact creature or enchantments to its owner's hand. That's fine. Becomes a creature. Okay. So it just gains flying again. Okay. Attacking to fairy, attacking me. All right, let's bounce the hammer. Oh, I should have bounced the nexus. That was so dumb. To fairy's down. I should have bounced the nexus. Let's just get a island. Let's just play another Teferi. Bounce Cigar to Zaid or a Construct? Probably a Construct. Pass.
Here it comes again. Um, all right. So I can take control of the... The Teferi going down is fine. Because I still have my Grand Abolisher. Uh, you can't cast it at instant speed, opponent. Stone Forge. Um... That's going to get another annoying artifact of some kind. Let's just counter that. I need more remand is what I need. And I just draw more land. Okay. I'll play another High Noon here. So whatever they target with the hammer, I can kill with a High Noon. All right, just attacking those guys. Fine. Here comes the hammer. All right. So let's Iganjo the Construct. Activating the Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, to make it... Ah, uh, to make it bigger. All right, they cheesed us out. Um, okay. Yep, they can do that. So that means we're dead. Hammer Time is good at cheesing like that. We do have good sideboard against them. Four, five. Is that all we need? It's probably all we need. We need Path to Exile as well. Queller actually isn't that great, because their worst stuff just comes in for free off Urza Saga. Archon is good. Cut of Visions. High Noon. We'll shave one Abolisher. One Bolt. Yeah, this looks fine.
We got a one of Restless Anchorage as a creature land, FYI. Cigar is aid. I think we'll go grab Hallowed Fountain right now. Play High Noon. We're going to have our lock on turn three. Stone Forge. Grabbing Cryptic Coat. What does this do again? An easy beast cloak the top card of your library, then attach it. So it makes a 3-0 unblockable. And you can return it to your hand. Okay. That's fine. Let's get to Fairy going, I guess. We'll get our island, or uh, our red source. Let's bounce the stone forge. Searching for a hammer. Another Teferi. That's plus. I think we'll just path the Stone Forge. Because we don't want them getting f uh, equipment onto the battlefield for free. We can remand their next play. And maybe if we're lucky and can draw some cards, more plays after that. Get a Triome. Spell Queller, that's a good draw. That is a good draw. Actually, I think I'll play uh, my Abolisher. Get a threat on the battlefield. Stone Forge, dope. Let's counter that. They'll never be getting that back. All right, let's fire up the old Restless Anchorage here. Get some maps. Getting some damage. Get a plus. And we're in good shape. Cryptic coat. Uh huh. Sure. Bounce the cloak token. 
or the cryptic code. Probably the cloak token. Pay to you. Archmage's Charm. Perfect. Let's play a fetch. Not gonna fire up. Oh, I could have explored. That would have been good to do. I guess I'll do it now. I get a flooded strand. Forge a new turn target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, that does absolutely nothing. Another path to exile is nice. Plus, play a land. Activate our anchorage. Attack. And this one's in the bag. They're just dead on board. All right, we totally locked them out there. So let's just do that again. All right, game three. We do have the uh, high noon. Archmage's charm might be useful. We'll keep. I don't know. I'd feel better if we had some removal. Opponent most of five. Cigar to Zaid. This is another matchup where Force of Negation might be decent. Saga. Stoneforge. Yeah, this is their nut, nut, nut draw. They just mold for it. So I need a way to kill that. Or this is going to be a short game. High Noon doesn't do it. All right, I think I've got two turns. I probably should have mulliganed. Like a hand with just high noon and some three drops on the draw against hammer time with no removal. I think that's a pretty, pretty clearly a mulligan. But I did not. Hammer time's a very good deck. Um, they didn't play the hammer? What did they... F they... They what? 
They took the hammer off of the f mystic. All right, that is bizarre. Well, I guess I'm holding up a ganjo. They had open mana. They they passed with with two open mana. Maybe they were holding up a counter spell or a surge of salvation. They're trying to not get to fairy bounced. Okay, they do make a construct. There's the hammer. Giving it to the construct. Okay. Sure. We will... Island... Hallowed Fountain. Probably Hallowed Fountain. Take control of the Urza Saga token. Check it out, we've got an 11-11. Let's attack. I take it. I'm just gonna hold up Otawara. Prismatic ending on the construct. Okay. It's going to attack with it. Um, I mean, I've got nothing else to do, so might as well just Iganjo. Okay. Well, they would have played another hammer if they had it, right? Let's go for Archon. All right, there's their hammer, which they get to equip for free. Should have played Teferi. I can play Teferi next turn. I can chump with Archon. Or I could just take 11. I probably need to chump. Hmm. 
Pithy needle naming. To fairy time raveler, okay. Hmm. Do I just go for Ordawara now? The way they played before, it makes me think that they have a Surge of Salvation. It really does. If I had one more land, that would be nice. Because then I could Otawara, which isn't a spell, with Remand backup. They are at six. Ooh, Forge a new. of the first equip ability. All right, let's go to Wara. Land would be good, a braid. I could just play another high noon, hold up reprieve or braid. That's what I'll do. There's a saga. There's a stone forge. Revealing cryptic coat. Let's just kill the stone forge. All right, there's a land. That lets me to fairy plus hold up reprieve. All right. I mean, I have lethal on the table with my high noons. An ornithopter. Uh, I think we got to remand that, right? We don't want them having any creatures. Grand abolisher. Bolts. 
Uh, that's going to be game. All right. Let's play an Archon. So we can bolt on their turn and then high noon them on our turn, and that's game. There's a construct. Unless they get a shadow spear. Just something they could do. They got the shadow spear. Oh, man. That really sucks. One, two, three, four, five. They're going to go up to 12. They got another hammer. All right. GG's. So, that was close. Uh, probably misplayed that. I think I could have been, like, triggering the... Triggering the High Noons earlier. So that when I drew this bolt, it was lethal. I don't know. It was a close game. Hammer game. Hammer Time is one of those decks that, like... They just refuse to die. Match 2 against Bob Vader 505. We'll be on the draw. Alright, opponents on a multi 6. Um, this is a one lander. I think we have to mull that as well. That's better. We'll keep and bottom an Archon. We don't have any really early interactions, so turn one Ragavan's what we don't want to see Tron. Okay. We really have nothing in our board against Tron either. I mean, Roman's good against it, right? Except against Ulamog. They just have natural Tron, naturally. Bolt. The Sage You. Sylvan Scrying. We'll reprieve that. Go for Archon. So whatever they land they fetch will come into play tapped. And we just need to draw our mans. We need to draw a lot of our mans. They just had the tower naturally, okay? The one ring. To fairy bounce the one ring as weird as it is yeah I think I'm gonna bounce the one ring because I don't want them drawing two cards and that kind of thing I need to find romance
Oblivion Stone. Another Teferi. It's gonna attack in. There goes my board. Let's play this land. Play another High Noon. Boy, I wish I had Remand. I wish there was a third Remand spell. If I could play 16 or 20 Remands in this deck, I would. Karn. Gonna get an artifact. Cityscape leveler. That's both the Karn. They're trying to make us not have fun. All right. Well, let's play to fairy. Find us a remand, please. No. Destroy up to one target permanent. Give us a power stone. Okay. Sure, they destroy rule of law. Ancient stirrings. Relic. I don't have anything that can stop the leveler at this point, I don't think. So, let's see. Uh, if we don't draw something really good here, I'll probably just scoop. Clifftop Retreat. Yeah, we just need to find Romance. I don't know. I guess I won't scoop yet. We know they have the one ring. This is uh, this is not going to happen. So we don't really have much against this, unfortunately. We got some pithy needles. Got what else? Force of Negation and Dovin's Veto. Subtlety. The bolts don't literally do nothing. 
I mean, they do have big creatures. Like, they could be playing Warm Coil Engines. We know they have the Leveler. So I could see Path to Exile. Could also see, potentially, Wear Tear. Although it's not great. Spell Queller is really not good here. Does hit Karn and some of their smaller stuff? Prismatic ending. I don't know about all this small ball. Like, yeah, we probably don't want to don't want to worry about their artifacts. Their little like eggs and whatnot. Subtlety is probably better than Path to Exile. If I'm worried about big creatures, it's also better than Spell Queller, I guess. So this is what we got. It's not much. This is a, definitely a bad matchup for us. Pithy Needle. Okay. Uh, we'll keep this, sure. We got a remand. Opponents on Tron, so they can freely mull to five cards, whatever they're nut, whatever they're required for their nut draw. Expedition map. Um, yeah, I guess I'll needle expedition map because I can. I'll just play this. Chromatic Sphere. Mm -hmm. Ancient Stirrings. Finds a mine, which they already have two of, so that's good luck for us. Pithy Needle number two. Okay. I think I'll wait till I see what their next pithable artifact is. Or it could be Karn, although I will settle to you Karn for sure. Hey, what's up, Beach Kiki? Oh, High Noon won you the pre-release. Nice. They're using the, uh, the Lava Axe mode. Pick your poison. Um, let's remand that. They don't have another green source, so that kind of hurts them. Another remand. So do I leave up subtlety? No, I think I play my Archon here. Yeah, the the threat of a uh, high noon activation won us a game. There's O Stone. Which I can also pithy needle. It's high noon. I 
I guess this is what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just using what I got. There's an argument for just drawing a card with that triome. I mean, we got something of a lock on them. Yet big creatures and instant spade remo removal, so only having one spell per turn wasn't a problem for you, but it was for everyone else. Cool. That's the trick, isn't it? Making it a problem for everyone else. All right, let's play High Moon number two. We might just cheese this one out, I have a feeling. There's an argument for flashing in subtlety there. I think I will this turn. They're at virtual two. I think I actually got him. The one ring. Um, we'll just force of negation that. To fairy. Let's play it to fairy. Just plus. Another one ring. Let's remand that one. They scoop. Wow, we locked him out. The jankiest, jankiest uh, high noon lock ever. Okay. That makes me think we do want the wear tears. The spell callers actually do hit the one ring and Karn as well. Yeah, I think we'll cut the path to exiles. Bring in some spell colors. You don't necessarily want all four. And one more cut. I like Archon. Go down one to Fairy. Oh, they just scoop game three. What? <laughs> oh, we we locked them out of the match. They just didn't want did not want to continue. We uh we quelled their their will to play Magic. Okay, we'll take it. Plight is our round three opponent. We'll be on the play. And we've got good stuff. We got our lock pieces, so that's definitely a keep. We'll 
We'll lead on our tap land. So, could be Yawgmoth or something. Wooded Foothills, more like, probably, I don't know. There's some kind of Renin 6 deck, I suspect. I don't know. Does Yawgmoth play Wooded Foothills? Let's go for the... Could be Amalia. Amalia's not really a thing in modern. Uh, I'm delighted Halfling, well, isn't in Pioneer. Let's see what they've cast here. Grist? Yeah. This is modern. I'm guessing it's Yawgmoth. Yeah, turn two grists on the play is pretty good. Mm, I could leave up a spell queller to try to hit a Yagmoth. They might think that they're safe. Then they could just minus Grist to get their Yogg back. Or I could just go for an Archon. We'll just go for an Archon. We'll grab a Plains. They make an insect. Their land ETV is tapped. Stringle Root Geist. No attack. All right. Well, let's hit Grist. Let's just play a land. They go for the cord. Let's reprieve it. We draw land. That's a good draw. Problem is, I don't think I can stop it now. They're gonna kill my Archon. Attack for a bunch. So now, if I cast go for Teferi, they respond with the 
cord. Wall of roots. Um, okay. That's fine. Remand. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get this one. They had turn two Grist on the play. It's pretty hard to beat that draw. Um, I could play to Fairy. It will instantly die. Play to Fairy. Bounce Strangle Roots. Remand it. I guess it's what I got, right? It's a fairy. Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. Um... I think I can safely scoop. They got the cord. Their board's way too wide. Uh, yeah, they just got a very, very good draw there. But we do have good sideboard. We have Rest in Peace. We have Path to Exile. We have Pithy Needle. Like, everything is good here. Subtlety is good. So I guess we're just kind of shaving stuff. It's tough. Let's go down a couple of quellers. We'll keep six, six of each lock piece. Cut a couple of bolts since we're bringing in paths. Archmage's charm. Um, hmm. We don't have any sideboard cards. We do have good cards. We've got half of our lock. We've got a bolt for a halfling. I think this is actually a keep. I mean... It's a good hand of magic cards. It's not necessarily great against what they're doing. But do I really throw this back? Young Wolf is fine. It's much better than Delighted Halfling. All right, there's our Archon. Let's go for Grand Abolisher. I'll take two. Oh, I thought that was a Sulphur Falls. Well, I want to play my Archon now, so... Guess I'm shocking. Hey. 
Haywire Might is their card for this turn cycle. Land DTB is tapped. No attack. All right, that's pretty good. So let's attack. Make our land drop. Play another Abolisher. Delighted Halfling? That's fine. Uh, I'll trade one of my Abolishers for that activation. Comes back. Then I'll bolt it. Let's go ahead and fetch as well. I think I'll just get a Hollowed Fountain so I can cycle a Trium later if I need to. Archon number two. Well, I think I need to hold up Reprieve, so... Not going to play my Archon here. We get a Dryad Arbor. Um, we can't counter it, but we can reprieve it. <laughs> well, it's, see, Delighted Halfling has this ability, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be countered. So, a Grist is a legendary spell, which normally cannot be countered, but Re Reprieve does not counter. Return target spell to its owner's hand. So we actually got around the can't be countered text there. All right, let's Archon number two. Spell Queller works that way too. Yeah, it does. That's also in our deck. We are playing Spell Quellers. All right, I've got one more Reprieve for the Grist. Oh, they just go for it. Okay. Well, that gives me a chance to remand, so let's do that. Pithy Needle. That'll be handy. Except they have a Haywire Mite. So, I guess I use this on Haywire Might. That way they can't gain life. Pass. 
pass. Yogmoth, well, we can't have that. Okay, I need to draw more remand, counter spells, subtlety, something, bolt. Might be able to catch him off guard with a bolt. All right, there's the Yogg. Mm -hmm. Bowl to you? They can continue sacking their team and maybe they'll find something. Uh, they gain two life just when it dies, even though it didn't activate. But they have to kill my whole team here. And they can't do it. Sweet. All right. I think I want more spell quellers. Maybe another bolt too. Let's cut fevered visions. Let's just go up one spell queller. Maybe prismatic ending. All right, we've got a rip. That's all we've got, though. A bolt. I mean, rip is very, very good against them. Um, they do have lots of ways, tons of ways to get rid of it. I think I'm keeping... Point it most to five. Opponent most to four. Okay. Well, that's a good sign. All right. We'll start on a fetch, I guess. Probably was better to lead on Prismatic Vista. I don't have a fetchable red source in this situation because I have my steam vents in hand. They left a card on top. Catacombs. Wall of Roots. Sure. That's fine. Spell Queller's nice. Let's go for Rip. Gr 
wrist. Gonna make some bugs. Remand. They have one card left in their hand. I think I'll just hold up a spell queller and a bolt. Pick your poison. Each opponent sacrifices an enchantment. Let's spell quell that. Let's fetch an island. Spell quell. Never. Now they can they can kill it with grist, but they'll lose their grist. All right, so they get the rip off the table. They have one card in hand. If it is a Yogmoth right now, that's pretty bad. It's not. Good. So what I do is... Bolt Grist. Um, I can just play a Shockland Tapped. Hold up my Remand. Masters, okay. Soul Cauldron. That will remain for sure. Spell Queller. I get pinged. Oop. What? Oh, they just added another mana. Yeah, this is so disgusting when they get this going on. Now I think I might be dead. This is pretty bad. Um, I could... Teferi 
bounce something. Yeah, I'm going to need a series of good plays here. Yep. Their whole team can just do that. Uh actually I don't know how I beat how I beat them with the with the uh soul cauldron. I need a pithy needle. Pithy needle doesn't do it though, it's too late. Ignoble hierarch, sure, whatever. Their whole team has Gris ability now. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's such a disgusting deck. Um, yeah, we can concede. All they need is just one turn with the one card in their yard and the Soul Cauldron, and that happens. We're against Dragon Rider 168 for match number four. Off to play IRL Magic. Oh, have fun. Sweet. Good luck. What are you playing? Well, whatever it is, good luck. Hope you dominate. Uh, This is a one-lander. It's a good one-lander, but our one land is also mono-colored. This is another one-lander, but... um. Rowan Swan. Oh, sweet. Commander. Nice. Sounds fun. GG's. Uh, good luck. Uh, I don't want to go to five. So I'll just lead on my triome. Morophon the Boundless. Okay, so they're a combo. They're a Sorin combo deck. Which means... I think it means I lose on turn three if they resolve their Sorin. Pretty sure that's what it means. But let's find out. They put a Morophon on the battlefield. It does mean that they can't cast a whole bunch of vampires, so maybe there's a chance. All right, they look like a Leyline Binding deck. Soren. Yep, minus for Morophon. All right, well, they can't cast any more vampires this turn. Slivers, that is. So I need a land here. Bolt. Yeah, if I drew a land, I had a chance, because I could have bounced the Morophon. Now I think it's going to be impossible. Well, I can wait. 
on this bolt, I guess. I can also remand whenever they play. Search for glory. Okay. They reveal Beseju. Okay. Let's go ahead and bolt. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. We get in planes. Planes. Um, yeah, they can, now there's no, uh, there's no rule of law, so they can just freely do whatever they want. I think we're dead. That's a combo deck. So we want Pithy Needle. We want Subtlety. I think we want Force of Negation. Probably Dovin's Veto as well. And cut a couple of bolts. Uh, not a braid. Dovin's Veto. Prismatic ending. I mean, by the time Sorn comes down, it's too late, and that's not going to hit anything. Fevered Visions. Spell Queller could be good. I like to ferry. Let's cut one abolisher. One high noon. Now high noon is what we want because they're like a storm style deck. Uh. One spell queller. Just cut the fevered visions. Uh, again a one lander. Can't keep that. All right, this is good. I don't have a rule of law effect. I gotta, I gotta keep this right. A bottom of reprieve. So, a question is, what do I name with Pithy Needle? Probably Soren, I guess. Dovin's Veto. I think given that I drew Veto, I actually pity Needle on Beseju. Cause I have I have an answer for Soren. Archon. Be nice if we had land.
I'll reprieve pretty much anything just to get an extra draw. To Fairy. 24 land deck. All right, there's a good draw. Uh, we will veto that. Reprieve! Oh, are you kidding me? Wow, that's a dirty. And now we lose, right? Maybe not. We'll see if they have a handful of vampires. Yep, all right, GG's. Boo! Man, reprieving my Dovin's Veto while I have two reprieves in my hand. Terrible. I mean, we... All right, final match against GingerGuy83. This is a good draw. We'll keep it. Unfortunately, we do have two tap lands, but we'll work with it. We're on the play. All right, what's going on over there? Is the reinforced pass? Is this more Goryo's? Is this Goryo's vengeance? Put a field of ruin in their yard. Oh, it's Mill. All right, well, it's a fairy's good. It's just plus. Okay, they feel the ruin. Guess I'll grab a mountain. They can't uh, archive trap. Oh yeah, they can. It's not instant speed. Archon. Mm, let's just draw a card here. Another land. Sure, let's play an Archon. They kill the Archon, sure. Yeah. 
Plus Teferi. Play Archon. All right, we've got our lock assembled here. Remand is very good. Let's attack with our Archon. Let's play another Archon. Gonna Otawara and Archon? Okay. It's just plus, I guess. Play an Archon. Attack with our Archon. We've got another Odawara. Each player draws a card. Okay. Okay. They cycle Fractured Sanity. Extracting Fevered Visions. I think I'll remand this just because. Yeah, I mean, it's a turn without them playing a spell, so why not? All right, let's just draw a card. Let's play a land. Let's just start attacking with our land. Getting for six. Everyone draws. Crab? I think not. Fevered Visions. That's a good one. Actually, I think I can just kill them now. 
attack. We'll get a high noon kill. Check it out, partner. It's high noon. <laughs> That's a lava axe coming to your face. All right. So what do we want? Probably just Dovin's Veto. Anything else? Maybe Force of Negation? Subtlety? Um, I'll cut a Fevered Visions at least. Probably both. Probably don't need both Subtlety actually. Just one is fine. I'll leave in one fevered visions. I like the bolts. I like the prismatic ending. Kind of high noon. And an abolisher. Yeah, I'll cut the fever revisions. All right, we've got our combo. If we can resolve our stuff. All right, survey a land. Goes to the top. Well, we have three lands that we don't need to fetch. So that's good. They have double crabs. That's not so good. Oh, no. That was, that was just a trigger. Total P Clover, thank you for the follow. How you doing? Hope you're good. Uh, let's just go for our hollowed fountain. Ha noon. Well, I would love for them to tap out. They don't. I think I'll wait. They cycle Fractured Sanity. Yeah, sure. Archmage's Charm. Well, I think what I'll try to do... Let's take control of the crab. Gonna fatal push their crab, all right. Sounds good. We'll grab. I have an island and a plains. Those are my last two fetchable lands. 
They didn't have a, uh, what's it called? Archive trap. All right, let's go for Teferi. Drown in the lock. Okay. Oh, I can't Dovin's Veto because of the high noon. Oops. All right. Oh, we have another Triome. Okay. Yeah, they got another crab. Sure. Well, I got Archons. Counter. Okay. You have one card in hand. Counter. Do I have anything left to fetch? Yes. Bolt. Let's go for Archon. Let's stop on their upkeep and bolt the crab. Uh, not on their main phase. Okay, I did it right. Visions of Beyond. Eh, they draw a bunch of cards. Okay. Alright, they take their turn to drown the bolt. Let's go ahead and grab a land while we still have lands to grab. We don't have any lands left to fetch. Reprieve. Cycling down to twenty two. Extracting Reprieve. How do they know to extract Reprieve? Are they stream sniping? It's a pretty lucky guess. You would think they would go after, like, Teferi. That is, that is some sus. That is sus right there. Why would they choose that card? Okay. Yeah, I think they I think they might have they might be stream sniping.
prismatic ending. All right. I don't know about that play. That that really makes me think they might be stream sniping. Some people be like that, I guess. I want Grand Abolisher. I'll cut Prismatic Ending. I'll add a Subtlety. No, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, I'll keep this. Let's go ahead and fetch this now. They have the least chance of having Archive Trap. There's a crab. Alright, let's bolt the crab. They land. Another crab. Let's play to fairy. Bounce the crab. More Teferis. Okay, let's plus Teferi. Let's play an Abolisher. Go. Uh, there's a couple of people in chat right now. One of them's Carol. More crabs. Let's plus attack. Um I guess I'll play another Abolisher. Just get as much of a clock as possible. More crabs. Fatal push one of my abolishers. Uh, why are you showing me this? I can't cast it. Veto.
Um, I think we'll bounce a crab. Play another Teferi. Bounce another crab. We'll counter that one. Yeah, our problem is that we're not finding, um, well, we have several problems. <laughs> they drew, they do Ancestral Recall. All right, let's attack. Bolts a crab? Probably bolts a crab. To ferry again, bounce the other crab. Eh, I don't think that accomplishes much, really. We have five cards left in our library. Archive trap. Yeah, I don't think we have enough uh, gas to get there. We only have three cards in our library. They block with their crab. Okay. They're just going to mill me out in some other way, no doubt. Drown in the lock. Um, I could bounce it. Yeah. I mean, it's my only thing. It's not going to be a, a, enough of a clock that uh, bouncing it makes a difference. So, yeah. They got us. Very, very suspicious play, Game 2. Very suspicious play. So, that was a 1-4 for, uh, for High Noon to Fairy Lock Control. And um, 
It was close, though. Like, it could easily have been a 3-2 if things had broke a little differently. Definitely some poor plays on my part. Like, uh, that game against Morphon combo, I think probably the Pithy Needle should have just gone on Soren rather than Besaju. That probably would have made a difference. Um, yeah, we were definitely in those matches, you know? It's not like we got blown out, but, like, some if things had broke slightly differently... Uh, it could have been a much better record for us. What do I think about the deck? I think the deck is cool, and I enjoy it. And I think when it gets its lock going, it's actually quite powerful. What would I change about the deck, if anything? Um, I don't know. Fevered Visions we never played. I think we drew it like a couple times, but um, we ended up boarding it out a lot of the time. Um. I'm always a fan of, like, Spell Pierce. That's a good card to play. Or, you know, more interaction. Just early game interaction. Path to Exile is a good card uh, in some circumstances. Um, I don't know. You could go, like... The reason why you want red is because you want the... To be able to activate the Lava Axe mode of uh, High Noon. But there's like there's like more creatures you could add that do kind of the same thing as Squel spell queller that work really good with the lock. There was the um, the Avon interrupter that I mentioned, which is also in Outlaws, which is good. Uh, there's like if you want to go for black, which gives you access to you know like Thoughtseize and Fatal Push and that kind of thing. Thoughtseize. You also get access to like Obscura Interceptor. Which, granted, is a 4 mana, but it's a 3-1, so it, it closes out the game quickly. That's another option, just like loading up on all of the creatures that are like Spell Queller, that can come down, negate your opponent's play, and be a threat. That would be a different build of the deck that might, be, that might be fun. It's modern, so you can do whatever you want with the mana, you know, with fetch lands. You can, like, play whatever colors you want. Uh, yeah, I just think that there were some games when we were on the draw... When we got a little behind tempo-wise, and it's hard for a deck like this to establish a lock from that position. And the deck really needs to get the lock going. So I could see Cutting Fever Visions for something else, you know? Like, possibly Spell Pierce, possibly even just, like, uh, Cantrips, you know? Like, um, Opt, or, you know, Preordain, Impulse, something like that. Something to help you get you, your combo pieces together and fend off uh, early aggression. Path to Exile, stuff like that. You could definitely lose Fever Vision, probably lose Subtlety too for that. And then the sideboard, I mean, it's okay. You could use more hate for Yogmoth, I guess. Um, not really sure how much more you could do. Four Rest in Peace, like more Rest in Peace, more Pithing Needles is always good. It's already pretty tuned for Yogmoth, honestly. I think both of the like um, last couple of times I played leagues, we played against Mill, so maybe adding like an Eldrazi to the sideboard as anti Mill tech would be good. Um, another thing about this deck is like it we saw it doesn't have a clock, you know, and that can be a problem. Uh, so adding a couple of Planeswalkers might help with that. Actually, instead of the subtlety, instead of swapping that for, like, a Spell Pierce or something, maybe, like, the Wandering Emperor. Adding a couple of Wandering Emperors would be, do great for this deck, I think, actually, come to think of it. Uh, just a, a four drop to top off the curve and really uh, get the pressure going. So I think that's what I would do. I would cut these for, like, cheap spells, Spell Pierce, something like that. I would cut Subtlety and maybe one other card for like a couple of Wandering Emperors. And I think then you would have a good deck. Probably you want, um, you want like Impulse or Opt or something instead of Fevered Visions. Because you want to find your pieces. That's the key thing. You want to find your pieces early. But, you know, they were close matches. I felt like I didn't get blown out in any of those games. Um, there was some questionable play, but, you know, that's just me. I don't play enough. Uh, I should really play more. That's my problem. It's like I, I build the deck and I like test draw it and test draw it and test draw it. And then I'll play like a couple of matches. Uh, but really, uh, I should be playing more matches. And I'll try to do that for next week. But I do like the deck. It's fun. 
uh, I think it could be tweaked to be something viable with some of the aforementioned changes and maybe something some that you've thought of as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for tonight, partner. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you like off-meta, off-kilter MGG content, be sure to mash that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'll catch you in the next one, partner. All right, done with that, done with that. Good night. I'm out of here.